little Saturday job. Got a pair of these arms. These are guide arms for my bakery machine. As you can see, that bronze piece, oh, this looks like brass to be honest with you. Um, that goes on there. This aluminium pin goes through this aluminium bar, like so. And um, there's too much slop in the system. Obviously the bar's worn, the bore is worn, and the brass piece, this one's actually the better of the two. That's worn as well. So there's a pair of these. I'm gonna re-bore that hole, I'm gonna bush it, I'm gonna make a new pin from stainless, and we're gonna have a go at making a new one of them out of probably gonna to have to be round bar. So we'll do that in a divide ned. So the first job, of course, is to um, measure this pin. This is the simplest thing to make. So just get some rough dimensions of what it's meant to be. So 16 mil OD. Ninety millimeters long, and then we've probably got a one point two mil circlip groove, roughly. Yep, and we'll get the measurements for how far that is from the end. Not very clear. I'm filming from the side. I apologise. Um, well, the centre of the circlip groove is probably twenty millimeters for the first one and I would say the center of the groove for the second one is probably about 37 millimeters we've got a hole a cross hole that's counterboard on one side that's seven millimeters and the counterbore means the shaft is 13.34 millimeters so that's our first thing to make and we're going to make that a bit of stainless 304 i do believe and then we can work on the arm so a pair of them to make Just got the parts set up in the voice and we're just going to clock in this bore so it's it's a, there's a bit of a ovality to it obviously but we're around 20 30 microns um all the way around so and because this is just a sliding bracket um the actual location of this bore is not like hugely critical um it only needs to be in the vicinity of where it was so that's um that's the easy bit done let's bore it out to a uh, sort of bush so that's the boring head there this is a gamay boring head um made in france and you can see it gives a very nice finish in the bore of that so we've pretty much cleaned it up now um we need to take a measurement and then finish bore it to size to suit um, a nominal sized bronze bush. The beauty of the digital readout is before I would have had to drop the uh, table right down, which is a pain in the ass because this table weighs a ton. Um, but now with the DRO, we obviously zeroed our axis and we just come across. We can take our measurement and then we can come back to zero and um, carry on boring. Right, so here's a few different um, options we've got now the wall thickness left on that part isn't massive on one side so i don't want to go too big so i've had a quick look online and you can get some more like bearings that are 16 mil by 20 mil um 20 mil is going to take it a bit close to the edge and um, i'd have to order them in but i have got some five apes by three quarter which are these and um, I can turn the OD in the part to 1905, which gives us quite a bit more meat on the wall thickness. And then um, once these are pressed in, I can just, um, or I can bore them on the lathe 
but or press them in and then bore them to 16 mils because they're at five eighths at the minute, so they're slightly under. So I think that's the option I'm going to go with. I've got some um, scrap ones that I've kept for turning down because this material is incredibly um, expensive. That's one I've actually turned from solid bar, uh, sintered bronze bar, uh, with oil impregnated. But um, yeah, the other option is machine one of these um, scrap ones down to suit. But I think this is going to be the quickest option just to bore them out once they're pressed in or quickly do them in the collet chuck on the lathe. Here we are on the press. I've just parted that bush off um, a bit closer to finish dimension. Um, I think this is 14.85, this piece of bar. It has been milled on the other side. Um, but I've, I've parted it off to 15 millimeters, which should, if it does stick proud, just give the... Um, circlips something to run against instead of them running against the aluminium so i'm going to press it in now and that's not even registering anything on the pressure gauge so it's going in nice and easily so we just press this all the way home and yep it does sit just proud of the surface which is really what we want because you can see the circlips have worn a bit of the aluminium away actually that's perfect that's pretty much spot on where it needs to be so now what we can do is bore this out um to 16 millimeters because that's going to be five apes but our shaft needs to be 16 so set it back up in the mill run a skim for it and um that one's done okay so we've just clocked back in on the um bronze or light bush so we're within 10 microns all the way around basically so that's good we'll just bore this right, out this is the second arm and the bush original fin wall bush is still in this so we're just going to machine it out um we've done our first cut we'll take another 10 foul and just um we've clocked it in um roughly so we we'll just take this out aluminium turns a lot better than the bronze bush. So we want to go the same again, we want to go three quarter inch for this. the table up a little bit so we're not extending the pouring head quite so far down with a quill. So let's uh, and have a measure. So we've got about 10 foul. Take that again and just double check that. Seven forty. And a few temps. Right, I'm down to my last two silver cells. I'm sure, I changed this a little while ago. Anyways, Let's see, this has been playing up a little bit. This micrometer. 
um, for some reason. I don't know why. Why do they make these so difficult to... Uh, Yeah, so this is the same maker battery. So I have changed this recently within the last year or so. The best batteries are the ones they come with, I think, the um, Panasonic or whatever they are. Let's see if that gets us back on track. Yep. Back on mine now, so origin, hold that, there we go, perfect. So the micrometer was actually playing up and um, we overshot the dimension by about a thou and um, so we asked for five thou and it took about 11. So we actually ended up with the bush being too loose, it wasn't a press fit. So I've used one of them scrap bushes to make a slightly oversized bush. Right, we've bored it to the right dimension uh, inside. And now I'm just using the facing aspect of this boring head to um, face off the excess. I left a bit more sticking out of this one um, so that we could machine it off dead flat with that face. So, uh, all we do is just hold that. Doesn't take a lot. Then I just need to wind it back. Just stop the mill. Probably should use the clutch, really. There you go, winding back. Just to the tips inside. Bring the uh, table up. Uh, we'll try a 0.4 of a mil cut. It handles that no problems. So I think we'll try 0.5 next time. Yep, point five's no trouble. One point five. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero the z-axis now, wind the table across, and just measure what the distance is. Okay, so we are about 55 foul looking at that. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, 55 foul. So let's just swap into inch a minute. And, oh, sorry. Let's just bring this up. Bring it back to centre first. Somewhere. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Right, so that's in the middle now. We can wind this in. Back to the middle, like so. And then what we do is just bring the table up 55 foul. Or let's do 25. What's it like that? 25. That 
press it there and we run it like that. Run him back in again. So, and then we bring him up the other five at 25 for a total of 55. I'll leave him just shy. Spot on. Perfect. Right. So out is quick, up and down on the quill. You push it in and you've got a fine feed. Put an eight mil reamer through now. Things because I seem to have moved. So, the speed I've got on this milk 316 RPM. It's through. And we've got a ringed hole. I left 0.2 in that 8 mil hole. Looks okay. Right, so um, these are the components all completed for our customer. You can see the original ones here. Um, I've got some wear on them. Them two brass or bronze blocks. Um, so we've replicated two of those. We also had some damage to these parts. There was some wear and they sit there. So we've replaced those with new stainless ones as well. And the original pins were aluminium. They're really soft, um, not really suitable for the application really. So we've replaced those with um, two stainless ones. And obviously we've bushed the aluminium component as well. That means that these are now nice and tight and there's no minimal movement in that system now. So this should be basically a hell of a lot better and it should last a lot longer. So it's, it's taken a bit of time to replicate all of these parts, but basically instead of having to buy uh, replacements, which were not cheap, and then they wear out again in two years, they now should get a lot longer. We've taken measurements from these. These are just brass because that's all I had in stock, but we will, in the future, if it wears again, replace these with bronze, a like a PB102, which obviously isn't leaded. Um, it's just tin and copper and a little bit of phosphorus. But um, yeah, so that's the completed job and um, we can deliver that back to our customer tonight and they can fit it next week um, when they return to uh, their customer. So um, basically pick this up yesterday afternoon uh, on the way home from work and then it's done this afternoon again. So drop it off this evening and the customer should be very happy.